Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. We talk about the problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. So, my husband has an older brother and his wife, Tara, and I used to be very good friends back when we were in college. Slowly, I realized how she is and I withdrew myself from her fun life to live in peace. But then she had to meet my brother-in-law in a club and go home with him and then marry him so that she could always stay in my life and make it a living hell. Tara had confessed that she knew he was my boyfriend's brother and she thought we would make a lovely family together if she makes him fall in love with him. What can I say? Men are stupid. He fell in love with him and now we are here with seven years of marriage. We all go at our husband's parents' house every month for a family dinner. Everyone works, so it gets hard to go on vacations together. Thus, we all do the monthly dinner. This month, I have the perfect plan to keep everyone entertained, and that was Tara. So yesterday, she sent me pictures of her with a 20-something boy in a club. She does not understand that she is not a college student anymore, but a wife and mother of two children. I cannot imagine to do this with my son. What would he think? Kids can have negative effect because of these kinds of habits of parents. She sent me multiple pics of her with that boy, actually, but I ignored all of them. I tried to give her a piece of my mind many times, but she just refuses to understand that she is putting her marriage in jeopardy. So when I did not respond to her pics, she sent me a voice note saying that I was too jealous, that I could not get the boys to like me anymore, that I can only get the attention of my boring husband, and that too, if I am not smelling like baby vomit. She said so many mean things to me in that voice note. She expects me to get jealous of her. She is cheating on her husband, embarrassing her children and ruining her family. If anything, I am grateful I'm not like her. But I got hurt by her words. The things that she said about me and my husband and my kid were just too much. She crossed the line and I will not sit still this time. She got pissed that I ignored her fun life, right? Now I will take it in consideration. After that voice note, I reconciled that any friendship between us is dead and I don't even want to be her friend anymore. So I am not at all obliged to hide the things that she does behind her family's back and then shamelessly shows it off. The first person I went to was my husband. I asked him to sit with me and then told him everything. This was actually not the first time Tara did something like this. She does it all the time. She even invites me often, but I refuse. There was once a parents teacher meeting and she asked me to go for her kids too, because she had a weekend plan with some guy and she needed to prep for it all Friday. That is how she was. I showed my husband all the pics that she has sent me of her with different boys. He was disappointed. He never liked Tara, but he considered her family at least. I told him that I was planning to show these at the upcoming family dinner at his parents' house. He was opposed to the idea and said it will create too much unnecessary drama and it will embarrass his brother. He loved his older brother, respected him so much. I felt so bad that I had to do this, but I did. I made him listen to the voice note that Tara sent. That voice note was enough to send him over the top too. He was furious. He could not control himself to call his brother right that instant and tell him how his wife was. But I held his hand. I asked him to let me handle this, that I will let her know that she went too far when she included my family into all this. The dinner is next week, guys, and am I the a-hole for being excited for it so that I can show what she did to the whole family? I did it, guys. We were all at the table for a while. I thought that she might not come to the dinner because she realized that she went too far and I might tell everyone, but she thought that she could throw everything and me and I will keep taking. Well, in that case, she was wrong. We were all seated and in the middle of dinner, she asked me how I was doing. I was caught a bit off guard. I looked at my husband and I answered, I was doing great. How was she? She said that she has been living her best life, but she was worried if I was. She said, it has been long and I should be having another baby by now. My son is six years old. I tried not to kill her with my fork and asked her with gritted teeth, what is she trying to say? She gave a mocking laugh and said nothing. That was it. I planned to show the pictures after dinner, so at least everyone had their bellies full, but now I could not care less if anyone ate. She asked for it. 
I told her to speak whatever she is implicating at, and she waved me off, and then I took out my phone and asked, is this what you were trying to say? And I turned off the voice note. I looked at everyone's face while they also listened. Her mocking voice asking me, how can I stick to my husband? He's not even good in bed, and she always needs young men to satisfy her. My mother-in-law was so mortified that she got up from the table, called Tara shameless, and went inside the house. Tara looked at me like she wanted to kill me and I gave her a smirk. She tried to take my phone from me when I dodged. She started calling me names like bitch, snake and whore and everything from Satan's book. I showed her husband and my father-in-law the pictures she has sent me over the years with her different dates in different places. The kids tried to look too but I and my mother-in-law called them inside for an early dessert so they did not have to see their mother's atrocities. Tara lost all self-control. When her husband asked what was the meaning of it all, she lunged at me trying to kill me for real. My husband got my hair out of her hold. She took about a thousand of my hairs out from the roots, the crazy bitch. I told everyone how she was and I was willing to look the other way because it was none of my business. But then she had to include my husband, my kid and our sexual life. She had no right to comment on that. She looked at me with tear filled eyes and said she considered me her friend and I did this. I felt a little pinch in my chest, but I looked the other way. We went inside, took my son. I apologized to my mother-in-law for ruining the dinner to which she waved off and said letting everyone know of that was more important and she, she always had her doubts about Tara but I just confirmed them. I hugged her goodbye and came home. On the way home I asked my husband if I was a bad person or friend for doing what I did and he held my hand saying that I told the truth and telling the truth will never make me a bad friend or person or whatever. I wanted to believe him but I was just feeling bad still about her. The way she looked at me and said that I was a bad friend I did not even know that she considered me a friend. She has always looked down on me and never cares about my opinion. I ask you guys again, was I an a-hole for exposing her like that? It has been a while, guys. I still feel bad about what I did at the dinner. Tara and her husband are having problems, but she is to blame for that. She did not care about it while she was out fooling around with college kids. I heard they are living separately for about a month now. I could not help but feel bad for her, so I called her to ask how she was, and she told me thanks to me that she could not even see her children anymore. I told her she never wanted to see her children. She hated being a mother, but her husband wanted a family. I told her she could come over any time if she felt like it and we could talk. She accepted the offer and told me that she would be here in the morning. It was awkward at first when she came, but then she started blaming me for her breaking marriage and awkwardness went out the window. I told her it was her own fault for never caring enough about her marriage before. If she felt as suffocated in it as she used to tell me, then why is she even trying to save it now? She can be free of it and live as she pleases. To that, she says that she loved her family and cannot even dream of living without them, that she realizes now when she is so close to losing them, she said she does not know how to fix it. Her husband would not talk to her or let her see the kids and she just wants to apologize and make it all right. I told her she will have to find a way to apologize and even if after that, there is no guarantee that she will be forgiven. She embarrassed the whole family, not just herself. Her daughter is old enough to understand everything and she was listening to everything. She started saying it was my fault about them listening to it. I apologized to her. I told her I got mad and stopped thinking rationally and that I should have. We sat in silence, but then she apologized too for saying those things in the voice note. I told her I will talk in her favor at the next family dinner if she promises to change, to which she agreed. I finally feel a bit better about the guilt that was weighing me down for weeks. NTA, not at all. Even the fact that you are beating yourself up for telling the truth says that you are a good person and a great friend. You did the right thing revealing what she did behind everyone's back and I fully support you. It is good that you guys made up in the end though. NTA, you were right. You did not need to feel bad even a little after that. I am a bit annoyed that you apologized to her at all. I mean, she deserved to be divorced and it was her fault, but it's okay if all of it worked out for you. Growing up, I, 28 male, was really close with my neighbor Diane, 27. 
Diane was the product of an affair, and despite her parents divorcing their spouses and getting together before she was born, her home life was really rocky. Diane pretty much lived with me, my little brother, and my single mom on the weekends, and by fifth grade, she had her own room in our home. We all saw her as family, and she was delighted as her only other siblings were her half-siblings, who all hated her. When Diane started high school, one of her half-sisters, Amy, started forming a bond with her. Amy was only a year older than me, and we hit it off. We started dating in college, and things were going well. I've always wanted kids, and Amy always said that she felt the same until our last year of college. Amy got a positive pregnancy test and broke down. She told me that she lied about wanting kids and that she was hoping that she'd either warm up to the idea or I'd change my mind. That she thought she'd be okay with it if it was for me, but now that she's pregnant, she knows for a fact that she never wants to be a mom. We argued and I told her that she'd known I wanted kids before she was even interested in me and lied. Because of all the fighting and stress for finals, she miscarried. I know it wasn't an abortion because she told me she would give birth to our child but didn't want to raise them. I broke up with her soon after. It was hard because I really loved her, but Diane was there for me. Last year, Diane got pregnant and the father wanted nothing to do with her or the baby. Having a single mom, I took her in and vowed to support her. She gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. Early in the pregnancy, Diane found out that she had ovarian cancer. It was a hard hit on all of us, and she started making a will and asked me to be the legal guardian of her child should it come down to it. Seven months ago, Diane passed away, leaving her three-month-old daughter in my care. She named her Josephine after my mother and didn't choose a middle name. After I officially adopted her, I gave her Diane as a middle name. Amy came to me two days ago saying that she waited till after the adoption process to ask me because she didn't want to stress me, but I should let her also adopt Josephine because she's Diane's closest family member and that Josie needs a mother. And since I grew up in a single parent household, I know that better than anyone else. I told her that Diane left Josie in my care and it's disrespectful to try and place herself as her niece's mother not even a year after Diane's passing. Some of Diane's family are calling and telling me that I'm being thoughtless and that Josie needs a mother, that I'm not family, so I don't know what I'm doing. It's all such a stressful time and I haven't even had a moment to properly grieve. So I'm probably not in the right state of mind. Am I the a-hole? NTA, if she wanted Amy to be her mother or any of her family to be the parents, she would have made them the guardian. Besides, I thought Amy didn't want kids. You were simply following Diane's wishes. NTA, do not let this woman who used you in the beginning and lied to you be a part of the family. Do not let her adopt this child as that gives her certain legal protections if she tries to take you to court and legally make you pay child support and other things. If you break up, then she can seek sole legal custody. Do not let her adopt with you. Do what your friend wanted. Don't you think there's a reason that she didn't ask Amy? Me, 26 male, and my fiancé, Kenzie, 27 female, are getting married this fall. She asked my sister to be a bridesmaid, and they have really bonded over it. I don't speak to my mother and haven't since 16. Not a word. She does reach out still, but I block the number. When I was 13, I came home early from school to find another man in our house. My mom then proceeded to lie about who the dude was and told me not to say anything to my father. I was always closer with my dad than my mom. She kept buying me things for days and reminding me not to say anything, but I told my dad what I saw. My dad flipped and they got divorced. My mom then decided to live with the guy I saw in our house. Unfortunately, she got split custody, so I was forced to spend time over there with my sister. Usually, just locked myself in my room and only came out to get food. I purposely fought with her boyfriend to force my way to live solely with my dad. My sister got upset at my attitude towards the situation, and we had a falling out. Eventually, when I was 15, my mom broke down and let me live with my dad full time. My sister kept a strong relationship with my mom and her boyfriend, while I haven't spoken to my mom since the days that she drove me to my dad's.
She kept reaching out once I was there, but I blocked her, which pissed my sister off more. We didn't speak after I went away for college. A year ago, however, she invited me to her wedding and wanted to catch up. Kenzie made me go to the wedding. I'm glad I went too, though, because we got some things healed. We started getting closer again, and now my sister is involved in our lives. But what happened last week is why I kicked her out of the wedding. I learned through my sister's husband that my sister had a plan to bring my mom as her plus one for the wedding. Her husband is going to be out of town and she thought it would be fine to bring my mom. I asked Kenzie if she knew about this plan and she said she didn't. But that I should go easy on my sister because she just wants my mom there and my mom is pressuring her. But I flipped. I called my sister and she said I needed to get over what happened. Mom was really sorry and just wanted to be there on my big day and was devastated to learn that she wasn't being invited to her only son's wedding. That she thought it would be a fun surprise for me. I told her she knew I was estranged from mom and that it was incredibly rude and sneaky what she was going to do. Since I can no longer trust her, she wouldn't be invited anymore. Kenzie is pissed because I kicked one of her bridesmaids out and thinks that I should give my sister another chance. But I never fully trusted my sister after I learned for years that she was feeding my mom info about my life when I specifically said not to. So this was her second time doing shady crap. A-I-T-A? N-T-A, but the real problem here is your fiancé not listening to you and respecting your boundaries. NTA, I'm a wife whose husband does not speak with his mom. She was definitely not invited to our wedding, his decision. And his relationship with her is 100% his own decision and not my business. If I would have invited her or been aware of a plot to have her in attendance, he would have been so hurt and betrayed. Your fiancé should have had your back and respected you enough to be no contact with your mother as well.